Hi, Canada. We are fortunate to be here with filmmaker Robert Boudreau of Canadian Premiere for Stockholm, your film. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So would you please tell our Canadian audience about the inception of this film and the true-to-life story which inspired it? Sure. So the film is based on an actual event that happened in 1973 in Stockholm. Um, it was kind of known as the bank drama, and it was a it was a bank it was a bank robbery and a hostage crisis um, that lasted for six days. And it's the origins of the Stockholm syndrome, which means that the hostages over that time started to bond um, with their captors and turn against the authorities. And so it's this kind of crazy, larger than life story about that incident. Many people have heard about Stockholm syndrome and have heard about the lore that it perhaps came from this original story but as it turns out few know the actual mm -hmm. details and yeah. just how crazy and zany and um, almost unbelievable mm -hmm. some of the details were when you set out to create the script and adapt that from the story um, how much of it did you take straight from real life and how much of it became yeah. uh, theatrical I remember there's a line in the film that says um, something about it being like a Hollywood movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing that attracted me to the story was that it was so entertaining and crazy. Um, this idea that, you know, the, the Prime Minister of Sweden at the time would be directly involved in negotiating, um, <laughs> that, the, that the bank robber kind of dresses up in this outlandish American outfit, is singing songs. The whole bank heist um, happens because he's trying to break his best friend out of prison. There's just so many crazy elements that when I looked at this, I thought this is... This is a great character study. It's, it's about a really important syndrome that we know today. But more importantly, it's a fun, entertaining um, ride that, that one has. And it's one of the things I talked to Ethan Hawke, our lead, about a lot, is that whenever you can tell um, an, a story about an important issue but actually do it in a fun, entertaining way, it's, it's kind of what you want as an, as an elevated genre type of a film. Now, you've worked with Ethan Hawke before, of course, in your yeah. lauded film, Born to be Blue in which he plays another true-to-life character, Chet Baker. Yeah. So when, when you were setting out to create this film, did you know right away it was Ethan that you wanted to work with? And um, did the process working with him change at all because it was a new uh, script and a new mm -hmm. story altogether? I did. When I, I was first um, approached on this project with this article in The New Yorker from 1975, which is the origins of it, when I, when I read it and I saw this character, this kind of lovable scoundrel, I immediately <laughs> thought of Ethan and we had been looking for something to do together. Yeah. And so I had sent him the article as I was writing the script and he had already kind of got very intrigued by it. And so there was never any doubt. It was immediately Ethan and he jumped on board um, very early. And it, it really helped. It, it totally ignited the project in terms of casting and it just all came together quite quickly around, around Ethan. Ethan's fantastic in this film, of course, brought to life even further by his incredible co-star, Numi. Um, and where can you tell us about her and where you found her and yeah. how? Well, Numi Rapace is best known as the girl from the, dra the girl with the dragon tattoo. And so, you know, I wanted to find, if possible, a, a great Swedish actress. And, and she's one of my favorites as it is. And the fact that she grew up um, as a teen in Stockholm, and this was a very, this is a very, very important cultural event for Swedes. It's one of their most important events because it's a real turning point in their country. Mm -hmm. And so she um, was really attracted to working with Ethan, but also in telling the story. And so she just seemed like an obvious choice. And I, I, Ethan and I both really love Numi because she's got such great energy and she, she's not a typical leading lady. She's a little, she's a, she's got, she's a little bit different, which is, which is really nice. And in this case, she's kind of playing a little bit against type. She's not this kick-ass um, girl with a dragon tattoo. She's this very effeminate bank clerk, which is great because then a lot of that stuff plays as subtext, the real Numi. Yeah. And she wasn't acting um, as a victim. She was vulnerable, yet so powerful mm -hmm. in her performance. It was, it was incredible. Mm -hmm. This is a Canadian-Swedish co-production, which is, which is mm -hmm. wonderful that you were able to um, create such a, a scope of a film mm -hmm. also staying true and working with Canada. Yeah. Did you film all of it abroad or, 
or did you film some of it or what, what portion of it did you yeah. do in Canada? So we, we filmed almost the entire movie in Canada, in Hamilton, outside of Toronto. Uh, because it's so interior based, it's really just a bank lobby yeah. and an exterior. So we shot all that in Hamilton. Um, and then we shot for a little less than a week in Stockholm for the exteriors and some of the early setups when uh, Ethan, the bank robber, is kind of going to the bank. Um, but it's the same thing we did in Born to be Blue. On Born to be Blue, we shot LA and New York in the 50s up in the winter in, Nor in Sudbury. And so, um, you know, that's what one has to do. And, and it, um, the co-production structure just works really well on these kinds of projects because it gives you casting flexibility and it allows you to um, tell an international story, which is important. Now this premiered at Tribeca. That's right. Congratulations. Thanks. And uh, were there any Swedish consulates? Was there anyone mm -hmm. from Sweden attending? And what have they said? There hasn't, <laughs> no, I mean, we certainly got a lot of feedback from our Swedish partners, uh, Chimney Post, who um, were our, our co-producers and that, where we did post there. And we got, some, we got some limited Swedish funding. And they don't really have a film industry per se there. Um, but also, you know, Numi was our, our kind of unofficial Swedish tour guide because she knew the event. And so she was advising on accents and various things. And we had enough Swedish actors in the mix that I felt like I was able to lean on them for certain reference. And I spent a lot, quite a bit of time in Stockholm researching at the archives and talking to people in advance, um, which is always important on these kind of things because I'm kind of an outsider telling this Swedish story, but in an, in an English language in a kind of a no, more Americanized way. Which is interesting because of uh, Ethan Hawke's character, Lars being um, really obsessed with Americana culture and yeah. um, just larger than life. It, just all the themes really lent itself towards that. Let's talk a little bit about Christopher Heyerdahl. Mm -hmm. He did an incredible job um, as the, the head, was he the chief of police? Chief Matt Sun, yeah. How did you find him and get him on board? Um, he was just a phenomenal choice. Yeah, uh, I loved Christopher Heyerdahl in Hell on Wheels. He plays a character called the Swede in mm -hmm. Hell on Wheels. And so um, I remember at that time, looking him up and, and realizing he was Canadian, but a lot of people don't know that. Um, but he's, you know, he's got Norwegian origins, uh, background, and he's always been one of my favorite character actors. And so when this role came up, he just seemed so perfect. Um, and, and I just, and he's, he's also just such a pleasure to work with. Um, so I feel very fortunate that, that, um, we were able to get him on board and kind of complete the, the kind of core of the, of the key cast. It was a tremendous film. The audiences have been loving it. There was so much laughter. Um, it, it was just wonderful on all levels. It's not just my opinion. We're going through hundreds and hundreds of audiences who are yeah. loving it. Um, yes, what, what is next for the film? It's, it's E1 has it. So we'll be bringing it to theaters in Canada and making sure you know about it. Mm. Um, any other travels that this will take you on? Well, so yeah, the plan is to release in March. Um, our American distributor um, is a relatively new company called Smith Global, which is Will Smith's new company that he set up that releases with Sony Pictures. And so um, uh, we're excited. We're getting a fairly wide theatrical U.S. release, and hopefully E1 can do a, a fairly substantial release here. And so. We're excited about that. And then, you know, it sold most of the other territories in the world, and that'll roll out after March of next year. Then I'm just thinking about, you know, the next thing I can do. Can you give us a hint on the next thing? I wish I knew what it was. I, I've got two or three projects all kind of coming together, but you never really know which one it's going to be. And if I say it's going to be one, it'll probably be another one. Um, so suffice to say, I hopefully I'm shooting one of my features next year. And then I'm, I'm trying to develop some really cool cable TV stuff too, like everybody else. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you. sitting down with First Weekend yeah, Club. My pleasure. Visit firstweekendclub.ca and we promise to let you know when and where you can see Robert's film, Stockholm in Canada. Thank you. Thank you.